Cervical cancer, thankfully, is on a decline. Uh, from the fourth commonest cancer in Singapore, now it is the fifth commonest cancer in Singapore ladies. The decline is the steepest, especially in the last 10 years, and this is all thanks to cervical screening. Very early cervical cancer, sometimes known otherwise as CIN, which stands for cervical intraepithelial cancer, have neither symptoms nor signs and can take many years before it develops into cervical cancer as we know it. If surgery can be performed at this time, the cure is almost 100%. When cervical cancer is developed and surgery is not possible, then the treatment of choice is chemotherapy and radiation together. The chemotherapy given is very mild and does not cause hair loss. Common cervical cancer is related to sexually transmitted human papillomavirus infection, otherwise known as HPV infection. These viruses are usually acquired in teenage or in early 20s. These viruses harbour in the cervix for many years, usually not causing any harm or symptoms. Many ladies can fight this virus and clear the cervix of this infection. In some ladies, however, the virus causes damage to the cervical cells and lead to precancerous condition known as cervical intraepithelial neoplasm, CIN. If CIN is not treated, it can develop into cervical cancer. This process from infection to cancer takes more than 10 years. If CIN is treated early, cancer usually does not end soon. It is believed that even if a lady has cleared herself of HPV infection, she's reinfected if she has multiple sexual partners or her partner has multiple other sexual partners. This is the reason why one of the risk factors for cervical cancer is sexual promiscuity. Early cervical cancer has no signs or symptoms. In its late stage, the cancer is associated with foul smelling discharge from the vagina, intermenstrual bleeding, postmenopausal bleeding, postcoital bleeding, fever or pain. There can also be a dragging sensation in the lower part of the body, like a prolonged menses, but it is not cyclical. Early cervical cancer has to be detected by cervical cancer screening. Screening is a procedure of detecting cancer when there are no symptoms. A pap smear is a thin smear of the cells on the cervix. This can detect most early cervical cancers in a CIN stage if a lady has this done regularly. And regularly we mean at least once a year to three consecutive years being normal, then once every three years. It is a painless procedure that is performed in an outpatient setting. If early cervical cancer is detected, surgical removal of the cervix and the womb can be recommended for ladies who have completed their family. Otherwise, cryotherapy or laser therapy can be completed, and in this case, fertility is retained. Established cervical cancer is treated with surgery if it is in a very early stage, for example, stage 1A. If the cancer is a little more advanced, for example, stage 1B onwards, radiotherapy with chemotherapy is recommended. The chemotherapy is usually of a very low dose, such that it does not directly harm the patient. There is no hair loss and the nausea is very mild. This low dose of chemotherapy primes the cancer cells to be destroyed by the radiotherapy. With new radiation techniques now available, collateral damage to normal tissues is also very limited. In certain circumstances, patients may present with very advanced cervical cancer. This problem cannot be tackled with normal chemoradiation as sometimes the cancer is too large. In this case, Chemotherapy is offered to shrink the cancer before chemoradiation is performed. This is called neoadjuvant chemotherapy. The chance of response to the cancer can reach more than 70% depending on the different types of chemotherapy that is offered. Occasionally, this treatment can result in complete destruction of the cancer even before radiation is commenced. Recently, more research has been done to look at the prevention of cervical cancer. Gardasil is a vaccine against four types of HPV. By having this injection, a young lady can prevent the chance of being infected with HPV virus. However, this injection can only be given when a lady is still young, below 25, and it is advocated that the vaccines to be given to girls as young as 12. 
The caveat with this vaccine is the lack of long-term side effect profiled, as well as the fact that it does not still guarantee 100% the chance of development of cancer. Uterine cancer is usually a cancer of older women. It is the seventh commonest cancer in female in Singapore. It typically presents as postmenopausal bleeding. It can also occur in young ladies presenting as heavy or painful prolonged menses or intermenstrual bleeding. Ladies with postmenopausal bleeding or intermenstrual bleeding should seek medical attention. Most of the time, only surgery is required as the treatment of the cancer. Some patients receive a very small dose of radiation to prevent the cancer from recurring after the surgery. Only occasionally when the cancer is deemed very aggressive that a patient requires both chemotherapy and radiation. Uterine cancers present with postmenopausal bleeding as this is the first symptom and that uterine cancer is usually in its early stage when discovered, there is no screening that is required. Treatment with surgery is usually adequate. In occasional patients, a treatment with a small dose of radiation is used to confer a greater protection against local recurrence. In rare occasions, chemotherapy can be given before radiation to confer greater protection for patients with more aggressive and higher staged cancers.